Hey guys, it's Casey. So I am taking a moment to answer some questions that I've gotten about vitamins. I've had a lot of people ask me, what vitamins should I take? Can I take vitamins while I'm fasting? What vitamins are gonna help me prevent hair loss? Yada yada. So I wanna go over these because I feel like there's a lot of misinformation and I wanna clear the air. So first of all, when you're fasting, the purpose of fasting is to cleanse your body. You're trying to detox all of the junk that you have going on from environmental toxins to food toxins to everything we've breathed in, touched and whatnot that has caused oxidative stress on our bodies. So when your body's detoxing, in the midst of this process, you have free radicals that are running rampant in the body. And so we, we had a, a study done by researchers that was so interesting I wanna share with you. So basically what they did was they took two groups of people and they said, okay, you're all gonna do fasting, but one group of you is gonna fast and you're gonna not use any added vitamins. Now the other group is going to use vitamins during your fast. And there was controversy for a while over, does a vitamin really break a fast and which vitamins break a fast and so on. So this study really helped us know what happens. So what they found was the group of people that were not using any vitamins during their fast had an increase of something called SIRT3. It's S-I-R-T-3. And what SIRT3 does in the body is it helps to grab onto and eliminate free radicals. And like I said, when you're in a cleansing state in a detoxing mode, your body really needs to get rid of those free radicals because free radicals cause all kinds of disruption and problems. And we want to grab onto as many as we can and flush them out of the system. So without doing anything extra, just fasting, your body turns on that cert three and allows the free radicals to get dumped. So that's pretty rad. Then they looked at the group and they thought, well, geez, is it gonna be better for the group that has the vitamins? Well, those that took vitamins during their fast actually had no present increase of CERT-3, stayed completely the same. So what that made us know is, wait a minute, vitamins do break a fast and vitamins don't help detox us any faster. In fact, they slow us down. So good news, we now know no vitamins during a fast. It's better for you just to be all natural and either dry fast or do water fasting with electrolytes. Now, let me clarify, minerals and vitamins are different. Minerals like potassium chloride powder and magnesium and salt sodium, those are not going to break a fast and those will help support your fast and still allow that CERT-3 production. So those are completely fine. Like the snake juice ingredients are totally fine and they do not disturb that, but they're different than vitamins. So make sure that you don't have vitamins during your fast. So now I'm gonna move on to what vitamins to take when you're in a refeed. So you might be a, a person that's doing long fasting, like prolonged fasting, and then you do a refeed maybe every, every two to three days or you might be a person that's doing intermittent fasting. Regardless the style of fasting that you do, you wanna make sure that when you take your vitamins, it's always with food during your refeed. So we wanna do that for a few reasons. Number one, vitamins alone do not absorb well. And I love the analogy I've heard before at a health conference where it said, an orchestra is beautiful because there are so many different instruments that make up this gorgeous song. If just the trumpet's playing really loud, it might be a great trumpet player, but it's not going to be the same as hearing a full orchestra. People don't go just to watch the trumpet, they wanna hear the whole orchestra. And when our body sees um, nutrients and vitamins, it needs the whole orchestra to be able to properly absorb that. So when we include food with our vitamin that we're taking, your uptake of that vitamin is going to increase greatly. So it's a much better way to get your vitamins. So the vitamins I wanna key in on right now are ones that you want to have in your arsenal for the fall and winter because they're super critical to your health. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is one that we all hear about and you've probably been taking it since childhood, but a lot of us when we become adults kinda of go, oh, 
I don't really know how much I need that. It's vitamin C. So let's dive into vitamin C and let's talk about what does vitamin C do in the body and what are its purposes? So vitamin C has been proven to reduce risk of all chronic disease. It's pretty awesome. It also boosts our immune system. It increases your blood antioxidants by 30%. That's huge. And antioxidants, you guys, reduce free radicals, okay? So when we're doing this with food, the free radicals that are in the system are gonna be eaten up by those antioxidants thanks to the help of vitamin C. Um, vitamin C also reduces high blood pressure. It helps to fight heart disease, and if you don't have heart disease, it helps to prevent it. It reduces uric acid levels. And for any of you who have ever been suffering from gout, you wanna have vitamin C in your arsenal, okay? It will really help to lower, that uric acid is so hard on our system and it helps to eliminate it really quickly when you have vitamin C present. It also prevents iron deficiencies. It protects your brain from memory issues. Who doesn't want that? And lastly, it reduces your risk of cancer and it has also been used for treating different forms of cancer. So there's a lot of reasons why you should be taking vitamin C. Now, obviously there are foods that are rich in vitamin C. So it's always good to get as much of our vitamins through our food as possible. But when you're in the time of year where there's sickness everywhere and there's colds and flus and just bugs going around, having extra vitamin C will not hurt you it will only help you. So get yourself some vitamin C. The next one is vitamin D. So vitamin D, um, most people, unless you live in a super sunny environment or outside all the time in next to nothing, you're not getting as much vitamin D as you need because vitamin D is one of those things that it very quickly gets used up in the body. So we want to be having a regular source of vitamin D. Now there are foods that contain vitamin D such as Tuna, mackerel, salmon, beef liver, cheese, egg yolks, and cremini mushrooms. Those are some, but you can also get yourself a supplement. But let's talk about what does vitamin D do for you? First of all, it promotes healthy bones and teeth. Second, it supports a strong immune system, a brain, better brain, and a nervous system. It helps to regulate insulin. This is another thing that we do and one of our reasons for fasting is we're trying to regulate insulin because diabetes is rampant in this country, in the world in general. And in order to re reverse that, we have to do things like fasting and adding vitamin D to our life. It also helps to support lungs and cardiovascular function. One of my favorite things that has been recently studied and you know, a lot of people this time of year run quickly to go get the flu shot. And let me warn you, not only is that dangerous because there are so many additives to that flu shot that can cause allergies and allergic reactions and sickness, it also weakens your immune system. It literally leaves you defenseless. But did you know that just taking vitamin D regularly reduces your overall risk of ever getting the flu by 40%? And the recent study showed that it's 92%, I'd like to say 100%, but 92% was what the study showed better than any flu vaccine has ever been at preventing the flu. So get yourself some vitamin D. And lastly, with the hair thing, a lot of people don't realize this, but having vitamin D helps to create new hair follicles and sustain the ones that you have. So it does give you healthier hair. Our next nutrient we're gonna talk about is curcumin. Now, curcumin is not um, an isolated thing. It's actually found in turmeric root. So if you're cooking Indian style foods and foods that contain turmeric, you are getting curcumin in your body. And so those are great to include and to increase your, your body's um, uptake of that. But a lot of times we don't eat a lot of Indian food. So there are some awesome supplements out there. I know Costco has a great one. Um, it's a turmeric supplement. And the thing you'll notice is all turmeric supplements or curcumin supplements have added black pepper. And a lot of people go, why, why do they add black pepper? Well, just adding black pepper to your turmeric. So like, especially if you're cooking, like you're cooking that Indian style food by adding the black pepper, you increase your uptake, your body's ability to absorb it by 2000%. So it's huge. So you definitely want to add the black pepper. Um, otherwise get yourself the supplement. 
So let's talk about the things that curcumin is known for. This one in particular is one of my favorites because it has so many benefits that every person, young or old, but especially those of you that are a little older, really benefit from. It's a wonderful anti-inflammatory. So get rid of the Advil, get rid of the ibuprofen, get rid of the over-the-counter anti-inflammatories. Those kill your gut flora. And so there you go, there's a side effect, okay? Curcumin doesn't have side effects. So it'll, it'll reduce your inflammation. It also, just like vitamin C, increases your antioxidant potential. It boosts your brain function. It lowers your risk of heart disease. It prevents Alzheimer's. It reduces symptoms of arthritis. That's because it's so anti-inflammatory. It works to cure depression. It has anti-aging properties. And lastly, it combats hair loss. So again, we know that fasting is a stress on the body, but it's one of those things that you have to figure out where, what is your purpose? Like, why are you fasting? What is your number one? We all have like a, maybe a handful of reasons why you're fasting, but you need to have like a, this is my main purpose. So if your main purpose is like, I'm fasting because I'm fat and I want to lose as much fat as possible, then you want to do prolonged snake diet fasting. And guess what? You're going to burn crap loads of fat and you're going to lose some hair. It's part of it. So you got to decide like, would I rather be fat and have a little less hair or have more hair and stay fat? Okay. You got to, you got to balance what is more important to you. Now, if you're of healthy body weight and you're like, hey, I'm fasting because I want to have great skin, I want to have healthy hair, I want to feel good, then balance it by going, I'm going to do intermittent fasting and during my food window, I'm going to take my supplements and you're not going to have hair loss. I have not experienced the hair loss that all these people have been talking about. Oh my gosh, I'm losing all these types of hair, but I haven't done long, long, prolonged fasts. I've only done 72s because I don't need to lose weight. I'm doing it for the health benefits. So again, you got to weigh out what's important to you, but when you're doing those refeeds, get yourself these quality supplements or make sure you have the foods that are going to give you those vitamins that you're needing. So the last one we're going to discuss is collagen because collagen has so many positive um, effects on the body and we're going to go over those. So first of all, collagen has been proven to improve your skin. It relieves joint pain. It prevents bone loss. It boosts muscle mass. It also promotes healthy cardiovascular function. And lastly, it increases hair strength and nail strength. So again, there you go for your hair. So it's a great supplement um, to help your body. But the best form of collagen you could possibly have is bone broth. So if you can get yourself to make your own, that's key. That's number one. That would be wonderful if you could make your own bone broth. If you don't have the ability to make your own bone broth, there are tons of companies that have bone broth in the stores, and those can be a great way to get it in a whole food form. Aside from bone broth, you can buy collagen peptides. These are available at, you know, online and in different uh, vitamin stores and whatnot. But collagen peptides can be added to anything from a shake to a, you know, to some Greek yogurt, whatever. There's a lot of ways to take them. Some people even put them in their coffee. Just depends on what you want to add yours to but collagen has a lot of positive benefits. So those are four things that you can add to your life. Vitamin C, vitamin D, curcumin or turmeric, and collagen to really get yourself set up for a healthy, very fit and well-feeling fall and winter. So I hope you try those out. If you have other suggestions that you've tried that have helped you, go ahead and put them in the comments. Please share with others. I love, you know, sharing information and helping others to reach their best potential health. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I have a lot of videos um, with an array of information from fasting to health to exercise. And I love making these for you guys. I hope they're helpful. I hope you have an awesome night. Take care.